Thank you for joining us. Our show today will focus on a subject of great national pride. The United States of America leads the world in a multitude of areas, including education, industry, technology and space exploration also. Our guest today is Dr. Al Kohler, the director of the National Science Foundation's Aerospace Resource Center at Brevard Community College. We recently celebrated an important milestone in our space history, and Dr. Kohler will share his thoughts on this, but first, we have this video. The story of America's journey into space begins at Cape Canaveral. This remarkable place has been important to explorers for centuries. It was included in so many early maps. It was named by Ponce de Leon, and its Spanish name means a place overgrown with canes and reeds. The lighthouse at Cape Canaveral was one of the first ever built in this country. The race for space began at the end of the Second World War when German V-2 rockets, engineers and scientists were brought back to the United States. The Cape was chosen as a launch site in 1946. The first launch from the Cape, called Bumper, took place on July 24, 1950. During the 50s, the Cape became the country's most active launch site as rockets, planes, and winged missiles launched almost every week. They were designed to help us win the Cold War with the Russians. and They included the Lark and the Matador winged missiles from sandbag-type pads. The Snark and the Bomark missiles were designed to intercept hostile aircraft. The Titan I and II and the Minuteman ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, were important to our nation's defense. Not every flight was successful. Many early launch attempts ended in spectacular explosions and crashes. When the Russians launched the world's first satellite, Sputnik, the race for space made international headlines. The United States was clearly behind. In spite of those setbacks, we never gave up. Four months after Sputnik, in January 1958, the United States launched its first satellite, Explorer 1, giving notice to the world that we were back. In 1959, the first seven astronauts were selected by NASA for the Mercury Man and Space Project and their names are Gordon Cooper, Gus Grissom, Scott Carpenter, Wally Schirra, John Glenn, Alan Shepard, and Deke Slayton. On December 19, 1960, the first Redstone rocket lofted an empty one-man space capsule a distance of 205 nautical miles downrange. On January 31, 1962, the second Mercury capsule was launched, carrying a 37-pound chimpanzee named Ham. Just as America began to celebrate these successes, a Russian cosmonaut named Yuri Gagarin was placed into Earth orbit on April 12, 1961, becoming the first human to orbit the Earth. We rallied our forces, and less than one month later, on May 5, 1961, Alan B. Shepard, Jr. rode the first manned Mercury capsule, Freedom 7, on a Redstone rocket from Pad 5-6 on a 260 nautical mile suborbital flight. On February 20, 1962, John H. Glenn, Jr. was launched on an Atlas rocket from Complex 14 and became the first U.S. astronaut to orbit the Earth in his Mercury capsule, Friendship 7.
President John F. Kennedy made three visits to Cape Canaveral during his term of office, and he established the goal of placing a man on the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Gemini was the intermediate step toward achieving that goal. The two-man Gemini spacecraft was bell-shaped twice as heavy as the Mercury spacecraft and with 50% more cabin space. The first manned Gemini flight was launched on a Titan II from Complex 19 on March 23, 1965. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. The astronauts were Gus Grissom and John Young. The Gemini program completed 12 successful flights, 10 of which were manned, demonstrating EVAs and orbital rendezvous, skills required to land astronauts on the moon. On October 27, 1961, the first Saturn I launch from NASA's Launch Complex 34 and Launch Complex 37 was christened on January 29, 1964, when the fifth Saturn I was launched. The Saturn I was a two-stage rocket, 116 feet long and weighing almost a million pounds. Three Apollo spacecraft were launched by the end of 1966 using upgraded Saturn 1B launch vehicles from complexes 34 and 37. Then on January 27, 1967, tragedy struck when the Apollo spacecraft being tested at Launch Complex 34 caught fire, resulting in the deaths of astronauts Grissom, White, and Chaffee. When NASA resumed launches after that fire, the facilities at Launch Complex 39 were ready for the Apollo Saturn V. The Saturn V launch vehicle was a three-stage rocket designed to launch men to the moon's surface. More than a football field in length and with more than three times the thrust of earlier rockets, the Saturn V dwarfed everything else. The first Apollo Saturn V was launched November 9, 1967 from Launch Pad 39A, placing an unmanned Apollo 4 spacecraft into Earth orbit. Apollo 5, 6, and 7 further qualified the Apollo Saturn V space vehicle, and on December 21, 1968, Apollo 8 was the first flight to leave Earth on a manned lunar orbit mission. Apollo 9 fully qualified the lunar module for a lunar landing mission, and Apollo 10 became the first flight to rehearse placing a man on the moon by orbiting the moon at low altitude. On July 16, 1969, Apollo 11 launched from Pad 39A, sending the first crew to land on the moon. Two, one, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. Here we got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. Astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins crewed the Apollo 11 mission. Houston, Apollo 11 is calling you on the high gain. How do you read, Owen? Roger, loud and clear on the high gain. Eagle, you're looking great. Coming up nine minutes. We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. 
their lunar module, the Eagle, landed on the surface of the moon on July 20th, 1969, winning the race for space. 30 feet, two and a half down, straight shadow, four forward, four forward, drift into the right level, Ready? down a half, 30 seconds forward, just Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin photographed the moon's terrain, collected rock and soil samples, and transmitted TV pictures to over 25 million viewers in the U.S. and around the world. They returned safely to the Earth three days later to worldwide acclaim and celebrations that demonstrated the importance of this achievement, not only to our country, but also to much of the rest of the world. The spirit of Apollo transcends geographical barriers and political differences. It can bring the people of the world together in peace. The Apollo program achieved six successful lunar landings and fulfilled all of the requirements needed to undertake future space exploration. Since Apollo, the first space stations, the U.S. Skylab, and the Soviet Soyuz and Mir vehicles have proven the value of working in space. Astronauts from 16 countries can now live and work in space continuously. Over the past 35 years, our achievements in space have included more than 100 space shuttle flights. These include missions to the International Space Station and Hubble Space Telescope. 